Good evening, everybody. Good evening and welcome to um, our very special event here tonight. My name is Sam Moston. I'm representing the Australian Council for International Development and a range of private sector players in the SDGs and some work that I've been doing with John Thwaites um, out of MSI. So it's a delight on behalf of all of our partners tonight to welcome you um, to our event. And it's lovely to see so many of you who um, come out to spend the time learning about the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and we hope you learn um, a lot tonight and, and leave inspired to play your role in ensuring that lots more people know a lot about these very important goals. I'd like to start this evening by acknowledging the people of the Kulin Nations on whose land we are gathered tonight. I pay my respects to elders past and present and of course acknowledge all Indigenous elders and members of the public who are here with us this evening. So you're very welcome to join us at People, Planet and Prosperity, why the UN Sustainable Development Goals matter for our Australia. It, it's our hope tonight that you leave with a deeper understanding of the goals if you have not come across them before, or if you have come across them that you take an even deeper interest in the goals, but most importantly that you understand more about the personal agency role that you can play in your own spheres of influence wherever you come from in, ex in, in seeing that the goals are well communicated and that we get a lot of people around this country engaged by what are now known as the global goals. The event tonight is brought to you by a range of partners reflecting that these new goals matter for all sectors, all countries, all people. And I'm really delighted tonight that in the front row we have Harold Mitchell joining us. Um, Harold has been a huge supporter of the process of educating Australia on these goals through evenings like tonight um, for, uh, for a number of years now through the Harold Mitchell Foundation. So Harold, it's lovely to see you here tonight um, and thank you for your en enduring support. Now as many of you... Now, as you know from all of the um, conference material, our partners uh, today are Monash University, the Monash Sustainability Institute, the Monash Faculty of Arts, and the Monash, Monash Centre for Development, Economics and Sustainability, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Australia Pacific, otherwise known as SDSN, and the magnificent SDN Youth, the Australian Council for International Development, the Global Compact Network Australia, and of course, the City of Melbourne. So, here's a thought about the future. It's the year 2030. The world is sustainably supporting a population of 8.5 billion people. More than 60% of the world's population now live in cities, and these cities are amenable, well-serviced, and prospering. The global economy has rapidly decarbonised, and new renewable energies are ubiquitous. Planetary temperatures, while still to peak, are now estimated to remain within the crucial two degrees Celsius limit by the end of the century. Rapid developments in promoting the role of women has seen a whole generation of girls educated from primary school to university in countries around the world. Political and business leadership includes an equal representation of women and female leadership is displayed in most aspects of all societies. Pleasingly, violence against women has been eliminated. Now, while this may all sound a little utopian, these are the opportunities presented by the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. Recently, I was fortunate enough to join the Australian Foreign Minister, uh, Julie Bishop, to go to New York to actually sit in the General Assembly Chamber at the moment where the Global Goals were adopted by 193 nations, including Australia. I'm happy to talk a bit later on the panel about some aspects of the event and what happened with the promulgating of the Goals, but I just wanted to share a couple of impressions with you tonight before we get underway that I'm, I will stay with me as I uh, give my commitment to supporting the goals. The first thing was that amongst those 193 nations represented by their civil societies, their businesses, their governments, their youth, there was the most incredible optimism that extreme poverty can be eliminated in this generation. The most common themes that emerged at the launch were the need for new and unusual collaborations. The term business unusual was used a lot for governments, for the private sector, for civil society, for NGOs. But the critical role of civil society was once again underlined and the rise of gender equality as an essential element for almost every goal was clear at every event. There was much focus on the need for all signatory nations to find a strong domestic framework for measuring progress against the goals in our own homes. 
the presence of young people at the UN in huge numbers was just inspiring, as was the strong voice of the Pacific and particularly those small nation states already faced by the effects of climate change. They had a strong and clear voice as people left the conference with a commitment to the goals. In a new development, I also observed many global corporations like Unilever and Facebook and others declaring that business and the private sector can no longer casually stand, alone, stand aside as bystanders to the world's biggest problems and must partner accordingly with all parts of society in meeting the ambitions of the goals. Now, I've talked about the goals as if you know them all already, so it's really important that we actually have a few moments to know what those goals are, and there is no one better in this country or in the region, I think, than our first speaker who's going to take us through the goals, and that is John Thwaites. John is a professor, 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 professorial fellow, my apologies, at Monash University and chair of the Monash Sustainability Institute and Climate Works Australia. John is a co-chair of the Leadership Council of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, launched by the Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, to provide expert advice and support for the development of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. John also chairs the Australian Building Codes Board and the Peter Cullen Water and Environment Trust and is a director of the Australian Green Building Council. He was appointed the chair of Melbourne Water. From 2012 to 2013, John was an exceptional chair of the National Sustainability Council, an independent council appointed by the then Australian government, which produced the first and only Sustainable Australia report in 2013. And I commend that report to you if you want a bit of background on what a sustainable Australia could really look like. John was, of course, Deputy Premier of Victoria from 1999 to 2007. He held many very various ministerial positions during his career, including being the Minister for Environment, Water and Climate Change. But tonight he joins us to unpack the SDGs for 2030. Please make John Thwaites welcome. Well, thank you so much, Sam, and welcome, everyone. I love that vision that Sam put before us of what life could be like in 2030, and I hope that the Sustainable Development Goals uh, will help us get there. And tonight, my job is to first say, what are the Sustainable Development Goals? To give some reasons why they matter, and also to start us thinking about what do we need to do to get the best use out of these goals? As Sam said, just a few weeks ago, all countries gathered at the United Nations to adopt these goals. And they really are a set of goals and targets that are going to guide global development for the next 15 years through to 2030. There are 17 goals and you'll see up on the screen, each symbol represents one of those goals. And someone really described them as a bit like a to-do list for a better world. And it is worth celebrating, I think, as Sam said, that at the UN you had global leaders all joining together instead of fighting each other for once agreeing on a sustainable path for the future. The Sustainable Development Goals build on what came before them and that is the Millennium Development Goals. And that applied from the year 2000 through to this year and they were targeting poor countries and they targeted poverty and health and education. And in many ways, the Millennium Development Goals were very successful. If you look at their key focus, which was to reduce poverty, back in 1990, nearly a half of the population, a half of the population of developing countries lived on less than $1.25 a day. And yet this year, that has been reduced down to around 15%. That, that is a significant step forward. Or in education, you know, one of the toughest, most difficult areas of the world, sub-Saharan Africa. In the last 15 years, we've seen the number of kids going to primary school in sub-Saharan Africa increase from 60% up to 80%. And in health, we've seen real advances in the fight against tuberculosis and malaria and HIV AIDS. 
And in many ways, the Millennium Development Goals help focus the world, countries, development agencies on those key targets. But in some ways, we've gone backwards. And one of the areas is inequality, where we're seeing within countries inequality getting worse in many cases. And across the world, as the Oxfam report, and that graph on the screen, shows that, the, in fact, the richest people in the world, the richest 80 people, just 80 people, which is that red line, now have the same wealth as the bottom 50%, three and a half billion people. And that's the green line on that graph. And we also know that global warming is getting worse and the greenhouse gases that we're now putting in the air are about 50% more than they were back in 1990. And more recently, we've seen this terrible incidence of conflicts within countries. Places like Syria leading to massive displacement. And so for that reason, back in two, 2012, countries gathered together and said we need a new set of sustainable development goals that meet all these issues. And they're made based on three pillars. Economic growth and prosperity. You've got to have that. You've got to have jobs and economic growth. Social fairness. We all need a fair opportunity to get health, get education. And importantly, environmental sustainability. If we don't have a planet, we're not going to be able to enjoy the fruits of economic prosperity. But you need something else to be sustainable. You need good governance and you need peace. And in a number of countries where there hasn't been good governance, there's been corruption or there's been violence and warfare, there's no way that they can develop and get the sort of advantages that we have. And so this process leads to where we are today, this set of sustainable development goals. And there are 17 of them and you'll see them up on the screen. And under each of these 17 goals, there are a number of targets. And I'll give you a few examples. The first is the example of the goal of ensuring healthy lives. And there's a specific target, and this is just one of five or six targets, that by 2030 will reduce by one third premature mortality from non-communicable diseases. Things like diabetes, which not only affect the poorer countries, but they're affecting us here in Australia. Or reduced inequality, and there's a very interesting target, that by 2030 we progressively achieve income growth for the bottom 40% of the community at a rate higher than the national average. Now that's a pretty significant target and it's not where we've been in Australia and it's certainly not where the USA is, where the bottom half of the community has been getting poorer and the wealthier have been getting richer. Or the goal for sustainable cities. And if you look at the first target there, there's a clear target for access to safe and affordable housing. And once again in Australia, affordable housing is a big challenge for us. And I think it's also important to understand that these goals are interlinked. They're not all silos, they're linked. And so if we want to get rid of hunger, we also have to attack climate change because it's droughts and flooding and natural disasters that are one of the big threats to food supply. And similarly, if we want gender equality, we also need clean water and sanitation. And I know from my own time doing work in East Timor, where many girls didn't go to school because there wasn't proper sanitation. So you need to bring these goals together. Now, it is worth reflecting on why having a set of goals is useful. And I know from my time in government that if you've got goals and targets, it makes you do stuff. They are a benchmark for government. They do mobilise the community and they spur experts into action. And hopefully they spur people like yourselves here tonight to get behind them and make sure that your politicians, the businesses that you work in or you buy from, are following 
this sustainable development path. And finally, I just want to say, what do we need to do if we're going to achieve these goals? Sam uh, referred to the Sustainable Australia report, and Sam and I worked on that. And this was a report looking at how well Australia performs, how sustainable we really are. And if we're going to achieve these goals, we need to have a way of reporting on them. We've got to see how well are we going and we've got to report to you in the public. And we do have some big challenges. If you look at greenhouse gas, CO2 emissions in Australia, that's us up on the left. The highest emitters per head of carbon dioxide in the developed world. Or if you look at income growth in Australia, that's been an amazingly positive story in the last 20 years. And that blue line represents our real income growth, going up about 57% since 1995. But it's worth noting that the top line, the wealthiest 20% are certainly seeing their incomes grow a lot more than the bottom, the red line. We're a lot better off than America in this regard, but we've still got a challenge. And if you look at the gap in outcomes for things like healthcare for Indigenous Australians, and that graph shows just child mortality rates up the higher brown colour is Indigenous child mortality, the orange colour is the whole community, you'll see that we've got a big challenge to close that gap. And I hope that the Sustainable Development Goals will help us do that. So finally, the theme for tonight, and this is the theme that SDSN Youth have developed, know your goals. And I guess what we're saying to everyone is, don't just know about them, think about what you and we together can do to achieve them. Thank you.